How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Let's talk about what happened today. We had the ETFs launch. Was it good? Was it bad? How are we feeling after today? What are some of the numbers behind the ETF launches? Let's talk about that. Also, some of the craziness. There's a lot of things that are absolutely nuts that happened today. I want to talk about that. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification underneath the video. There's also a link underneath the video to Marjax where you can trade cryptocurrency. There's no KYC. There's, you don't need a VPN. You can see everything on screen. You can use TradingView to chart right in the app. So if you want to do something based on TA, it's great because you can you can do it right here instead of trying to go back and forth between TradingView. Definitely check this out underneath the video. There's also a link down there to HG Access where you can sign up. We have a list of about 10 creators that constantly make uh, information available in that Patreon. We're doing exclusive live streams, all that. So definitely check that out underneath the video as well. Let's take a look at the liquidations and then we'll get on to some of the BTC ETF news. So over the last 24 hours, we had about $300 million of liquidations, most of which are short liquidations, a good amount being long. Um, so about 60, 40, maybe 55, 45 there. Uh, so people getting wrecked on both sides. The big news of today, though, was that there were multiple brokerages that are not allowing people to trade ETFs. Now, some of it is just because it takes a while. Like I have my own brokerage um, that I do some investing on that's not a big name, but it's kind of like Webull, Robinhood, and they don't allow it. But sometimes they're just a day or two behind. But Edward Jones is not offering BTC ETFs yet pending a review by their investment committee. We also got news that Merrill Lynch, owned by Bank of America, is also not allowing customers to buy Bitcoin ETFs. The biggest name, though, is Vanguard. Vanguard has seven, maybe seven billion, uh, seven trillion dollars in AUM. And they say that they have no plans to offer Bitcoin ETFs because, quote, high volatility runs counter to our goal of helping investors. They literally offer Bitcoin mining stocks, which have higher volatility than Bitcoin. That's true. I mean, if you go look um, at Bitcoin mining stocks like CleanSpark, it's up 300 percent in the last year. Bitcoin's up 200 percent. It has big drawdowns too. like from July to October. It went and got cut in half down 50 percent. Bitcoin didn't. Maybe it moved down 30 percent or something like that. Also, Vanguard holds. Some of these companies, like or some of these stocks, for example, they're one of the largest owners of, uh, in mutual funds of, for example, CleanSpark. They're also one of the top institutional holders. They buy all these kinds of stocks all the time. Also, this is something very fascinating. If you didn't know this, this is going to probably blow your mind. Over any four-year period you choose, a combination of 98% cash and 2% Bitcoin obliterated the performance of the S&P 500 with 14 times less volatility. So that kind of counters their high volatility runs counter to our the goal of helping our investors, um, that point that they're making. Just nuts. Uh, and I get that they have been fudding this for a long time. But it is interesting to see so many big institutions that have nothing to gain, really, by not allowing this, um, that are still putting up roadblocks. Now, I think this capital will come in. Right? I, I think that these companies will change. I already see a lot of people talk about canceling Vanguard, moving their accounts. And of course, Twitter is going to be very far in the crypto corner. But I'm assuming they still are getting a lot of flack for this. And if people want to invest in this, if it's approved by the SEC, they should be allowed to invest in it or they're going to lose clients. Keep in mind that a lot of people still don't know about this either, about these ETFs. This is from Pomp. The news has not reached many people outside of our echo, our echo chamber. Northwestern Mutual, 558 plus billion AUM. My senior financial advisor who has $5 million average client portfolio under his management, hadn't heard about the BTC ETF approval. No internal uh, Northwestern Mutual communication about it. And he said 
They would block any trade desk orders for anything BTC related, SEC approved, open market, ETF or not. Their compliance hasn't green lit it yet. So this might just take some time. Um, they say some info in regards to a wirehouse firm and their eligibility requirements to buy the ETFs, $10 million net worth, aggressive risk portfolio, not allowed in discretionary managed account, brokerage accounts only, must be solicit must be unsolicited, only allowing trading in seven of the 11 approved ETFs. So there's so many roadblocks still. A lot of people don't care. A lot of people don't know. But as I showed this morning, there is going to be advertising, <laughs> whether it's BlackRock, Fidelity, all these companies are going to start advertising, whether it's online or commercials, and people are going to want some allocation. So if they can't get it, they're going to look to move. A lot of them are. And it is kind of a slow trickle. As I've said, I don't care too much over the next day, week, month. I care what happens long term. I care about retirees buying this in their portfolios, in their retirement accounts. And that's what's really important to me. So uh, there may there might be some volatility over the next half an hour, hour spot. Bitcoin ETF settled daily after the 4 p.m. Eastern close using daily average price as Settlement ETFs rely on third party Bitcoin index firms to weigh prices from global exchanges. ETFs will buy Bitcoin from OTC desk between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern time to rebalance. So be ready. At least this is the word. I don't know if this is actually how it works, to be honest. I've never dug this deep into ETFs, but this could cause some volatility, especially when Asian markets wake up as well. There could be some volatility on crypto's price. So let's take a look at the overall uh, inflows or the overall volume, right? So the expectations were $4 billion in ETF in, into ETF inflows. Now, they say ETF inflows. I believe they were just talking about volume instead. Um, we had a lot of seeding as well. What did we actually get? We got about $4.5 billion the first day of trading. So it did beat expectations. Some people thought it might be a little bit higher, but keep in mind, a lot of people weren't able to trade. Like half of the big, uh, half the big brokers out there didn't even allow it. So how many more people would have bought today if they could have? I think a good amount. And keep in mind too, some people had the sell button and no buy button. That's so offsided, right? Like Vanguard took away the buy button for GBTC, but left the sell button. And a lot of people do want to buy these ETFs. Um, they want to buy some lower fee, so they might have sold GBTC. I did that myself. So that could cause some price changes as well. We will have to get more information on that over the coming weeks and months, but I would expect some volatility still to say the least. So uh, one other thing to pay attention to, the total money market fund assets grew by almost $10 billion to almost $6 trillion. This is a significant amount. Um, and as we've talked about before, this could come back into the market. Now, I saw this interesting article that said uh, why the $6 trillion pile of cash and money market funds isn't heading for stocks. Uh, and they talked about some chief global macro strategist said that cash on the sidelines can be bullish for stocks, but it's pretty much propaganda at this point. But the interesting thing is, uh, they say other significant period periods of declines for money market assets were 22.2% drop following the technology bubble bursting in the early 2000s and the 10.5% decrease in 2020 during the pandemic. Of note, all three past periods of declines coincided with the Federal Reserve's moves to ease monetary policy while bolstering the economy, motivating investors to move cash out into higher yielding assets. Now, depending on when this exactly happened, like was it on the recovery or was it on the drop? Because some people might have taken it out just to pay for expenses or they're worried or they just want to get all their money out, I suppose. But uh, it sounds like more, and this would is what makes sense to me. When the Fed starts lowering rates, those people that put money in money market funds go and they just can't get a yield. So they go and move it to the uh, to investments, higher risk investments. Because honestly, I don't think there are too many families that had money in money market funds that needed it to come out to pay for things like because they were worried about some kind of crash. Like, what are you going to do with it unless you're going to spend it? But again, 
people that have money in market money market funds are probably pretty I don't want to say even well educated but like pretty well off I would assume because they're using money market funds they're not just throwing in a checking account and they probably have a lot in it like the people that put a lot of money in mar money market funds have a lot of money so they're probably pretty well off and have their bases covered so they go and move it when the fed cuts rates to higher risk investments like crypto like stocks now crypto overall today is up you know some people are disappointed with how this happened why um, crypto is not exploding uh, I had some people that thought maybe the ETFs would be approved and Bitcoin would spike up like 10, 20%. Remember, a lot of this is priced in for the short term. Like people try to play these events and think that it's not already all priced in. Long term, I don't think it's priced in. Like how much money is going to flow into Bitcoin specifically because of these ETFs is massive. But, you know, during the event, when the event happens, whether it goes up or down, it's hard to know. I don't try to make any short-term predictions that are like uh, really important decisions based on massive events like this. Like, yeah, I might trade, but that's more on a technical level, not because we're going to get approved or not approved. I still think today's volume is really important and more just the long-term implications of this volume Obviously, there's a lot of demand for products. There's a lot of trading going on. Let's say, let's say 55% of the volume today was buys, 45% were sales, and whether it's people taking profit or selling off GBTC or something, that means that there's an inflow of about $450 million into these ETF products. We'll get more information soon, but 45 million or 450 million. A lot of companies are saying that there's about a four, uh, about a hundred x multiple, somewhere between a twenty and a hundred x multiple on the inflows versus how it affects market cap. So when we see four hundred fifty million dollars worth of inflows, that could push up the price forty five billion dollars. Now, of course, there can be offsetting sellers as well, right? For example, Bitcoin, uh, people could take profits on it, which offset some of these volumes, but that is going to continue to come in. Like there are going to be people that continue to buy this. Let's say, let's just say it's $10 million a day, which I think is low, but $10 million a day worth of total, um, worth of total inflows. That could be $3.6 billion throughout the year, which multiply that by hundred, that's $365 billion in market cap. That's a big change. And that's just one thing. That's just one thing that couldn't push up Bitcoin's price. I'm just throwing out some numbers. I'm not saying those are the exact numbers, but I'm just showing this is going to be a trickle that continues to come in that pushes up the price. Now, let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out Margex if you want to try to trade these markets and check out HG Access underneath the video as well. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.